Hello everyone and welcome to round 6 of this year's FIDE Grand Swiss. We have a very nice game on board one, uh, Andrei Yesipenko versus Hikaru Nakamura uh, featuring an opening we have not seen in a very long time. Maybe even we were seeing it for the first time in classical chess, uh, it is the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. Uh, a, a very sharp opening that you, uh, if you don't know, it's very very easy to get lost uh, and uh, especially if you've uh, done some work on the, on the normal dragon, you might get mixed up in some of the lines. Now, uh, the reason why someone uh, would play the hyper accelerated dragon instead of the uh, normal dragon i'm just going to show you what it is e4 c5 uh, the sicilian defense and now after knight to f3 the immediate pawn to g6 uh, it's uh, only the fourth most popular continuation and um, uh, by fourth i mean there are maybe like 13,000 games in the database play from top tier tournaments whereas from uh, the main lines you know the d6 the e6 and knight to c6 there are like maybe 300,000 games in the database altogether so uh, definitely a sideline when it's uh, when a Sicilian is considered and uh, like I said the reason why you would play it is uh, if you're just starting out and you don't want to learn all the theory on the Sicilian and you really like the dragon setup uh, it requires you to learn maybe three lines instead of 300 lines now uh, this also means that it's going to be much easier for white to play as white also needs to learn um, uh, you know not, not so many lines and uh, here usually uh, everyone counters it with pawn to d4 it's the pretty standard idea and the game that really helped me uh, to understand how to play against this type of uh, Sicilian the hyper accelerated dragon is the one that Anish Giri played against Magnus Carlsen in the uh, uh, 2021, I believe it was um, uh, the Magnus Carlsen Invitational, and Anish won brilliantly, and he won in the main line of this uh, Hyper Accelerated Dragon, which I thought um, was impossible, and he even played one move that the engine said it was like disgusting, the, the engine said no, do not play this move, but um, it's obviously incredibly strong, and Magnus could not uh, find his way out of this move, so I, I haven't covered this game yet, for some reason I will at some point. So that's uh, just what I wanted to uh, mention. But here, uh, we don't have the, the main D4 move. We have pawn to C3. So uh, sort of the uh, slow wood, the, the alapin variation against the hyper-accelerated dragon. Uh, we have pawn to D5, and now pawn to E5, grabbing more space in the center, and now pawn to A6. And there are a couple of games in the database. Uh, I found five of them, and uh, all of them played exclusively by uh, Jahongir Vakidov. Uh, and he drew drew four of them and lost one of them, but he is the only player that um, plays this setup. We have pawn to d4, knight to c6, and now there is a game where bishop to e2 was played, but here we have pawn to h3, and already now as of move 6 we have a completely new game. So let's see what Hikaru had in mind. Bishop to g7, we have bishop to e2, and now pawn to f6, immediately uh, attacking white strong setup in the center here. E captures on f6, we have knight captures on f6, and now both players castle. And now bishop to e3, again, very standard stuff. You see that um, Hikaru has a very strong uh, attack here in the center, so you want to add more support. C captures on d4, C captures, and now knight to h5. Just putting more pressure there on d4, and preparing to put the knight on f4, which will put pressure on the bishop somewhat, uh, you, you will never be able to capture. And also Hikaru wants to uh, start advancing that g pawn to g5 and maybe even to g4 so rook to e1 uh, and now just knight to f4 with attacking the bishop hikaru of course wants to give the bishop pair he plays bishop to f1 and now hikaru played pawn to g5 and um it's a very complicated position where Yespenko went into a 30-minute think because there really is a lot to consider here. Of course, you're not considering uh, capturing on g5. That would be silly. If you capture on g5, then e5, and now you really have problems. The knight is hanging also. The, everything is nicely defended here. Play the knight back, then even knight to, the pawn to e4 now chases away the knight, which is defending the d4 square, and then your bishop is really tied out down to the defense of the d4 pawn, and Hikaru just gets too much out of the position. Position. the bishop is in the game you have the semi open f file for the rook uh, this would be a dream position for a tactical player like hikaru so instead we have knight to e5 this uh, sort of prevents e5 for the moment and um, uh, prevents pawn to g4 but it does require him to sacrifice
place a pawn. So okay, there's nothing better for Hikaru. He takes the pawn, knight captures, pawn captures, and bishop captures on e5, and now just knight to c3. Yasipenko continues development with pawn to e6, now defending the d5 pawn, and the bishop to c5, putting pressure on Hikaru's rook with bishop to d6, and now bishop to d4, sort of winning a move here, uh, as uh, the d5 square is nicely covered, now you don't have to worry about e5, so Hikaru prepares it, knight to g6, and now we have knight to a4. Uh, going after knight to b6, it's just going to be a very, very annoying uh, piece. And also, uh, you will uh, either win material or you're going to win the bishop pair or something. Uh, but Hikaru says, nope, bishop to c7. And he stops it altogether. Now, a most complicated way to handle knight to a4 would be b5. I'm just going to show it because it's a classical game. And this move uh, would really... Uh, you know, uh, brighten our days, but it, it I, I believe it would require too much time to calculate, and both of them were already uh, down to some maybe half an hour. Uh, so here, a point, the point is after knight to b6, you can play pawn to e5. You sort of sacrifice the rook, but white will not take it, white will move the bishop. Now you play pawn to d4, queen to b3 with check, king to g7, and now you play knight captures on a8, uh, but you don't capture a material, you go for bishop to b7, you develop uh, on this beautiful diagonal, bishop back to d2, white gets the piece out of the uh, out of harm's way, and now queen to f6 even, you go after the f2 pawn, and once white defends this, you can even play h6 and defend the g5 pawn, point being that even though the knight escapes the b6, it can't escape any further, all of these squares are covered, you're going to play rook f7, take away the d7 square from the knight, and the knight still has no squares to go to, and it's gonna uh, fall eventually. So a very interesting way of uh, playing, but Hikaru decides, nope, I'm not calculating that, he just plays bishop to c7, or maybe he calculated it out and decided that this was better. Uh, also possible, as Hikaru uh, calculates very, very quickly. We have bishop to d3, now putting pressure on the knight, also maybe with some ideas of doubling up the pawns, but really queen to h5 is the main plan. And here the situation on the clock was 28 minutes for Andre and 38 minutes some for uh, Hikaru. Uh, and uh, Hikaru throws down the gauntlet. He plays pawn to e5 and now uh, either Ispenko will uh, uh, calculate well or he won't or maybe he will overreach somewhere or he will just fizzle out into a draw. Uh, so Ispenko goes for bishop captures on g6 and now e captures on d4. And the idea is that if uh, Ispenko tries to um, keep the bishop into the game, let's say bishop to d3, then queen to d6, and already uh, white is now the one who, who has problems. Uh, but Ispenko says, nope, you can have the bishop, just queen to h5, and now it's Hikaru to move. Does he accept the draw, or does he try something better? Now, a very nice attempt for him would be, if possible, if is queen to d7. You guard uh, on h7, you put pressure on the knight, and uh, you just prepare to um, uh, continue developing your pieces and bring more firepower into the game. The problem is this would lose um, uh, on, on the spot and it's a, although it's a hypothetical position, feel free to pause the video and figure out how white wins this while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that the queen uh, has to protect the seventh rank. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, the rook lift. The rook comes to e6, and now there is no defense against bishop captures on h7, followed by some very nasty checks with the rook. Uh, now, the idea is, okay, even if you play bishop to e5, uh, sort of to maybe give up the bishop for... Uh, uh, for, for uh, uh, something like h captures on g6. Uh, now knight to b6 just wins. You attack the queen and the rook and black loses material. And if you don't play this, what else is there to try? Uh, you can play something, of course, you cannot capture the rook. If you capture the rook, you just get checkmated. If you try something like b5, you attack the knight, then knight c5 attacks the queen and defends the rook. Uh, although it doesn't require defending, but still, let's say queen g7. And now the main idea, bishop captures on h7 just wins. You capture or you don't, doesn't really matter. Of course, rook to g6, check, king h8, and now rook to h6 will win the black queen. And um, yeah, very quickly, the game. So after this queen to h5 move, Hikaru did not go for this. Of course, he played h captures on g g6 and now there is no other way to conclude the game other than queen captures on g6 with check king to h8 
And now queen to h6, the game uh, very quickly uh, and ended with a repetition of moves. But just uh, uh, I'll show you that it's not possible. If you could somehow get this rook to h5 or h4 or h6, okay, it would be checkmate. But there's just no way to do it. Even if you try something sneaky like knight to b6, hoping to get the e5 square for the rook, black will even allow it. It's not a problem. And after rook to e5, uh, the problem is there's this bishop to f5 move uh, attacking the queen. And now you really have to capture. Otherwise, black is fully developed and you're just going to lose the game. So you're going to have to trade here, captures, captures, and uh, or even better, just give a check. And after king to g8, now you continue checking. And now we either have a perpetual or if black insists, you can go to the f file, then give up the rook with check. And now you have to go back. You cannot allow the rook you want to, to land with check. So king g8, queen to g6 check, and so on. If you go to g7, and then rook to e1 will again be de uh, deadly for black. Uh, so yeah, after king h8, queen to h6 was played, and here we had a nice repetition, and on move 27, uh, Andre and Hikaru agreed to a draw. Uh, so uh, uh, tomorrow is a rest today, and they will have all the time to prepare and the rest for uh, going into round 7 fully refreshed. It's hard to say if they will remain in the lead, as uh, most of the games are still being played. This was one of the first games to finish. So uh, we'll see what happens. Definitely going to cover at least one more game uh, from this round, but as there's a rest day, probably I will cover at least three games games from uh, this round so use hashtag suggestion and do suggest your favorites uh, so yeah that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and like i said even though we avoided the main line with c3 uh, if you want to check out that game i still haven't made a video on it but you're welcome to you know find some other sources uh but i will maybe maybe i even show this game on a rest day i'll, I'll see i'll probably show it after the tournament though uh so yeah once again really hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank john gear law office llc mario milano the Bruders on spotify steven mccann and chess uh, beats league uh, for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.